How's it going everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 9 tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about how to mix your bass guitar. Alright, so let's first look at where we are starting. Alright, here's the, going to be the song and then the bass by itself. Alright, so that is the bass without any plugins on it, just guitar preamp into logic, alright? So first things first, what I'm going to do is put a bass amplifier on it, because the bass amplifier just fattens the sound up and gets it to where we want it. It's almost like if the guitar was going to be sent through an external amplifier and then mic'd out of that amplifier into the preamp and into logic, alright? So that's why we're going to do this first before our EQ and then our compression, alright? Um, so for this I'm just going to do, I did the American stack, I find that the American stack is going to be my favorite and I can I usually use it for every genre, it, it, it's that versatile. Um, and then the model, I'm going to be choosing American Deep, um, just go in and see which one of these you like the best and then I tweaked with the settings just a little bit until I liked it. Now, the output level I set so that this plugin is volume transparent, which means that the volume bypassed is going to equal the volume unbypassed. All right, so before and after are both the volume is going to be equal, all right? So let's do a before and after. First thing I want you to notice is what this amplifier does, this bass amp does, uh, and then secondly that there is no volume increase before and after, all right? All right, so there's no volume increase, it just changes the tone, and that tone changed significantly. You can tell that there was, is definitely a fattening up of that original track, and that's exactly what we are doing, and what we're going for with this bass amplifier plugin, all right? So now with that out of the way, we're gonna go into some EQ, all right? So EQ is gonna be like this, a low cut around 50 hertz, um, and that's because the lower those frequencies below 50 is just a rumble, and it's just gonna it's just going to it's just gonna just muddy up the mix, and that's not exactly what we want. Uh, doing this is not going to completely kill all of those frequencies. They're still going to be there. They're just going to be decreased uh, by a significant amount, and that's going to be perfectly fine. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to want to do to clarify our bass EQ our bass with our EQ, all right? And then we're gonna put a high cut in as well, and you can do that as we as you want. Um, you can probably do a significant amount of high EQ or high cut because a guitar is a lower frequency presence instrument, all right? So low cut and high cut. Now in our mid band, we have a few interesting things happening. Number one is at, uh, I don't know, between 50 and 200-ish, uh, we are going to be still cutting in this region. And that's because if we turn on our analyzer and look at it, you can still see that there is a significant amount of presence in this region and almost too much and so I'm just going to be cutting just a little bit more still in this region and then and I have it cut significantly at 184 Hertz and that's because at this frequency there is just uh, a warble uh, a dissonance almost that is just not what I want into the track and so I'll play this here with the increase to show you So you can almost hear that it's 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 that uh, that dissonance that I don't want. So that's why I am taking it out by a significant amount. All right, and then I would say between 200 and around 2,000 hertz is where the presence of the guitar is, or where we're going to be forcing the presence of this bass guitar. All right, um, and then I have it increase at 100. What are at 1.1 kilohertz, and then also increase a little bit at 500. So you can you can see that we're pushing up and increasing the frequencies in this region. The frequencies between 2,000 and 5,000 are going to be more of uh, the frequencies where you can hear the pick against the strings strumming, or where you can hear the the strings slapping against the fretboard of the guitar or the bass guitar. Um, and, and so I'll just show you that really quick here.
All right, so you can hear more of the picking sound when I increase those frequencies, all right? And, and this could change depending on genre. If you wanted more of a hardcore, hard rock, you might uh, increase those frequencies because they could mesh a little bit better with your guitars in that region and your bass drum since you're going to be EQing that in the higher frequencies as well, all right? Um, and then so that's basically what I have going on and what the reason for my EQ uh, on this bass track. And finally is going to be the compressor, just general compression techniques, uh, mid attack, uh, semi low to mid release. Um, and then the ratio is going to be f on par with probably a guitar ratio um, and, and significantly higher than uh, the ratio on, say, a vocal track, something like that. And then knee is going to be significantly higher at the max because I want it to just round off. I don't want any sharp um, um, compression at higher at higher volumes um, and, and the reason for a, a, a higher ratio is because or is that when you record a bass guitar and you and you say you're using a pick on the guitar or on the bass guitar uh, the transient is going to be significantly higher volume than the steady state uh, uh, or the um, after a time after you pluck it um, the volume that it stays constant at for a, a little bit is going to be a lot lower than the transient at the beginning. And so we're just going to be decreasing that transient uh, by quite a bit if we increase that ratio more. Uh, so that's why we have that. And then our comp my compressor threshold is going to model about 7 decibels of gain reduction, so let's make sure and check that is correct. And it's floating around 7 decibels, so that's why I'm adding 7 back in, alright? So general compression on this track, and uh, and that's it. Just those three plugins, and, and I'm just going to use those three plugins because that is what's going to clarify. That's the clarifying effect that we want for our bass guitar. If we start adding reverb, we're going to be digressing. We're going to be muddying up that track again. So I would suggest no reverb on a bass guitar track. All right, so let's hear it in the mix now. All right, so it definitely is clarified in the mix a little bit more. Um, let me by un let me bypass all of these and then unbypass them to show you how far we've come across just these three plugins. All right. So much different. Just it's night and day difference between where it was and where it is now. All right, so. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have questions on this video or another, please hit me up in the comments below or in a message. Um, and then comment, rate, subscribe like a freaking bitch. And I will be seeing you all very soon. Have a great day.